welcome to the Bond Room Unlocked, whereby I'll be inviting you to turn the key with me on my 26-year-old Bond collection and Roger Moore as Bond in A View to a Kill. Shh, did you hear that? I think something may have just cooked. Hey, voila. Quiche de cabinet. Sounds interesting. Mmm. What is it? An omelette. Only Roger Moore could have cooked a quiche in a James Bond film. I mean, imagine Daniel Craig doing that nowadays. I know it's all about equality, but it just wouldn't have fit in with the tone of his films. Now, Roger was a youthful 45 years old when he took over the James Bond mantle from Sean Connery with his first entry, Live and Let Die, in 1973. And some 12 years later, and at the age of 58, Roger played our super spy again in A View to a Kill in 1985. But should he have done so? Was he too old to play a convincing James Bond? I personally believe at the time when I saw the film in 1985, he wasn't. He was 57 years old when filming commenced, nearly 58 when the film was actually released the following year. I believed yeah, he was convincing. I was 16, what did I know? Yes, and I think as a kid, I didn't really take in the detail. I liked the stunts, I liked the action, so it never really occurred to me the age of Bond. I just accepted it. It's only really nowadays that it, you find it noticeable. Hi, Victoria. Uh, thanks for the invite to contribute to the channel. Do I think Roger was too old in a view to a kill? No, not really. I think he acquits himself quite well. The problem really is the casting of Stacey Sutton. If they'd gone a similar way as Octopus with a Bond girl closer to his age, they might have got away with it. Thanks, Stuart. Now, the late Tanya Roberts was spotted by producer Cubby Broccoli after he saw her in the 1982 film Beastmaster. He had her audition and the rest is history, so they say. But she was 28 years old and Roger was 57, 58. Was this too big an age gap to be believable? Uh, he might be older than the Stacey Sutton character, but apart from the first time they meet in France, he's not really sexual towards her. Um, and I believe their relationship is more like... Um, Bodyguard and client, um, for example, in San Francisco, when he goes to her house, he sits up all night with his shotgun. I find that, you know, very Terminator, if you know what scene I'm alluding to in the Terminator franchise. Um, and also there's a couple of bodyguard elements to it. Um, goes into the room, checks the room first before he lets her in, opens the door. And yeah, I think I think it's a perfect balance. Hmm, that's an interesting angle. Personally, I don't see it like that. You see backward glances, stolen looks, and when Stacy mentions that the circuit box is outside her bedroom window, Bond says, I think I should be able to find that. I also think Roger agreed to do this film so he could equal Sean's count of uh, having played Bond seven times, regardless of the whole official, unofficial debate. Speaking of Never Say Never Again, I do think that the character of Zorin owes a little bit to the character of Largo in that film, but that's something for another day. Yes, and as I've mentioned in a previous episode, Roger Moore was due to wrap up his work on Bond after For Your Eyes Only in 1981, but word was on the street that Kevin McClory and his agreement with Broccoli and Saltzman had come to an end regarding not producing a film based on Thunderball from 1965. And that film being Never Say Never Again. And that was on the cards in 1983, so Roger had no chance but to sign on for a two further films as producers needed the established actor to go up against Connery in Never Say Never Again. It is interesting that Sean Connery believed that Bond should be played by a male in their late 30s and that both he and Roger Moore were far too old to play Bond. Upon subsequent viewings as an adult, I've changed my mind and have come to the conclusion that yes, unfortunately, he was too old. Uh, he said in subsequent interviews that he was only 400 years too old for the part 
and he was especially galled when he found out that he was older than his leading lady's mother at the time of filming A View to a Gill. Not good. He was still in good shape though. 33 inch waist, 38 inch chest, weighed about 13 stone. He still looked good, even though he had had surgery prior to filming. It's something to do with his eyes and he also had his mole removed, I believe. Could have been something to do with vanity. We'll never know. For me, it's not just so much Roger looking old. It's those key people around him who are ageing. Particularly Money Penny, played by Lois Maxwell for 23 years. A View to a Kill would have been her final appearance, having one hour screen time and less than 200 words across the franchise. Now, the actress wanted the character to be killed off, but producers said no. So then she thought, as a natural progression, maybe her character could become M. But again, producers did not think it appropriate for Bond to take orders from a woman. Some ten years later, and this is exactly what happens when Judy Dench is cast as M in Goldeneye. You don't like me, Bond. You don't like my methods. You think I'm an accountant, a bean counter, more interested in my numbers and your instincts. The thought had occurred to me. Good. Because I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur, a relic of the Cold War. I think maybe producers were right not to cast Money Penny as M. It would have been difficult for Bond to have took instructions from her, being as their relationship was so personal. So what piece of memorabilia do I have to share with you today that's linked to our film? Well... This is the 007 James Bond storybook of the movie A View to a Kill and it's published in 1985 by Grosset and Dunlap of New York. Now this is a pretty unique book in my collection. It's unusual to get a hardback book that's just basically telling the story. There's no behind the scenes, no character analysis, no costume design, no set design. It's just a storybook. And it came out in 1985 and it's in absolute mint condition. And it's a great addition to any James Bond collection. Overall, I enjoy A View to a Kill a lot. It and Moonraker are probably my go-to Roger films to watch without much effort. And it has my all-time favourite one-liner. When following a night of passion with Mayday, Zorin asks if he slept well. A little restless, but I got off eventually. Great stuff. <laughs> One thing Roger could do was deliver the perfect line. The other thing was all the action sequences that featured 007 had stunt doubles. And that's never good. And it was really, really obvious in A View to a Kill, unfortunately. I totally agree. Now, Roger was one for not doing his own stunts. And if you look at the action sequences closely, you can tell that the stunt doubles aren't subtly used, as Adam has so rightly pointed out. The Paris sequence is just one example. <laughs> Released for the film, a lot of critics threw jibes at Roger. Though one of them said, he's not just long in the tooth, he's got tusks. And also, they didn't find him believable in the action sequences, and unfortunately, even less so in the romantic scenes. Pretty harsh. One thing that Roger Moore's films are not are boring. Even the darker toned film of Your Eyes Only from 1981. Yes, there's craziness, yes, there's campness, but Roger was a Bond for the 70s and 80s, where fans were less serious, they wanted escapism, they wanted fun. And boy, did Roger deliver just that. And I think Roger plays up to his age a little bit, but I've never really seen it as an issue. I know other fans do, and they are allowed to have that view. This is my view, and I don't think he's too old for Avtac at all. 
the purpose of this channel is to take the items in this Bond room and relate them to the films that we know and love. If you have enjoyed this Roger Moore merged view to a kill episode then please give it an mi6 stamp of approval and click on the notifications below why don't you press the red button and subscribe so you don't miss any further episodes the bond room unlocked is on facebook and on instagram and you'll find more content there and you can also occasionally see me co-hosting on spymovienavigator.com cracking the code of spy movies with Tom Pizzato and Dan Silvestri. A uh, look at the pre-title sequence of Live and Let Die is out shortly so stay tuned. Now I'd like to thank Adam, Stuart and Neil for their valued opinion on Roger and A View to a Kill. Much food for thought and I'd like to thank you for joining me at the Bond Room Unlocked. I personally am very fond of A View to a Kill and I will happily watch it over many others. Daniel Craig's, Pierce Brosnan's, some of Sean's. I think it's great entertainment and I think Roger gave it his all. But I think at the end of the day, even he realised he was too old.